Hey, in this tutorial, I'll walk you through how to create a morphing animation loop in Procreate Dreams. And if you want to follow along, I have linked the working file in the description. Before diving in, let's take a quick look at the breakdown of the animation. In the first part of the animation, we will have this morphing exit animation with the text morphing into a blob with a liquid trail that flies in an arc shape to the right before then hitting the top of the pumpkin, which triggers the reveal animation, which fills up the pumpkin. And then after a nice hold, we see the pumpkin morph back into the text, leading us back to frame one. To get started, I've already set up a widescreen file with 12 frames per second and a starting duration of 4 seconds. Feel free to customize your file size to your needs. Also in that file is my two key poses, which are the Happy Halloween text here and the pumpkin shape here in the third frame. Pro tip! Drawing your two poses around the same size or shape is going to help make the morph more seamless. And to help me figure out the first part of the animation, I'm going to sketch an animation guide. I'll start by drawing an arc from the top of my first pose to the stem of the pumpkin. Next, I'll draw lines from the bottom and center of the text to the endpoint of the center line, which should give us a tapered shape that starts out the same size as the text and shrinks to one point. And then I'll return to the timeline and fill the duration of the frame and rename it to guide so it'll be present throughout. And now I'll make sure I'm back on the main animation track and we'll re-enter the flipbook mode. For the first in-between frame, I'm going to redraw all my letters but I'm going to make them a little offset and shift it to the left. By having the first movement going in the opposite direction, it will create some anticipation as it will look like the text shifts back before springing forward and becoming a blob. Next, I will click on the plus icon over here to create a new empty frame. To help me better see what I'm doing, I'm going to go back to the timeline and I will hide the anticipation frame and the pumpkin frame for now. With that done, I'm going to return to flipbook mode and redraw the text in the empty frame. As you can see, I'm beginning to connect all the letters. This is important in the beginning to show the text is starting to merge together. Next, I'll color drop to fill in the text. And since color drop currently doesn't fill completely, I'm just going to go over the spots missed while thickening up the connected areas. In the next blank frame, I'm going to loosely redraw the outline of the text. Next, I will go in and draw the outlines of the openings as the text hasn't fully merged into a blob yet. And once again, I will use color drop to fill in the outline and go back in to clean up the color fill. Now, I'll add a new frame and I'm going to redraw the right edge to create a blob that's about half the size of the original text. Now that my text has become a blob, I will have it move along the art guide. So in the next blank frame, I'm going to redraw my blob and move it up in my guide. And to show that the blob is beginning to speed up, I will start drawing the liquid trail drops within the end of the previous blob space. This will give the illusion that the drops are falling off of the blob as it speeds up around the curb. Next, I'll add a new frame and redraw the blob further along the curb. And since the blob is moving faster, I'll draw the new set of drops larger and then I'll redraw the previous spots shifting a tiny bit forward and make them also smaller. Now in a new frame I will draw the blob stretched out as it spins around the curve. Next I'll draw the drops and continuing to make the previous drops smaller. Then I'll fill in all the shapes. 
At this point, I want the blob to start slowing down. So I will redraw the blob smaller and draw some large drops over the previous blob's onion skin area. And once again, I will redraw the previous drops moved a little further and half of the size of the previous frame. Once done, I will fill in the remaining drops. Next, I'll add a new frame and redraw the main blob moving forward and getting smaller. And I'll just draw a couple small drops over the onion skin area. Since it's slowing down, there will be less drops coming off. Next, I'll repeat the process of drawing all the previous drops smaller and moving them up a little bit further along the motion path. And now I'll add a new frame and redraw the blob a little smaller and with no drops to communicate it has slowed down. And once again, I'll redraw the previous drops moved a little further and half the size. Since I'm close to the end of the guide, I'm going to go turn on the pumpkin frame so I can see the shape. And in a new frame, I will draw my blob. Next, I will redraw all the motion trail drops smaller. And at this point, I'm leaving some drops blank to indicate that they've completely disappeared. And then in the next frame, I'm going to draw the blob begin to enter the pumpkin shape. Next, I'll redraw all the drops again. Once done, I'll add a new frame and I will start by redrawing the drop smaller for the last time. And for the blob, this time the blob is going to fully submerge into the pumpkin. So I'll start by drawing the edge of the stem and then the drips for the bottom and then fill in the shape. Next, I'll add a new frame and I will return to the timeline and turn off the guide layer since I don't need it anymore. Now I'll return and I will draw out my blob filling up more of the top of the pumpkin. And I will repeat steps in the next frame, continuing to expand the pumpkin fill and draw around the eyes. For the next frame, I'm going to draw the blob starting to fill in the pupils as I draw around the pumpkin eyes as I further expand the fill. Lastly, I will color drop and go in and add some touch-ups to make sure everything looks smooth. And now since my pumpkin is almost complete, I'm going to just double the second key pose frame. And with the eraser selected, I will erase a little space at the bottom of my pumpkin and also erase around the bottom of the teeth. Now that the first part of the animation is done, let's review playback. So I'm going to return to the timeline and I'm going to expand the last key pose frame so it's six frames long as I want to hold for several frames so viewers can see the pumpkin fully formed before it morphs back. And there's no specific frame duration. I always recommend adjusting the frame length and playing back to see what looks best to you. And then I'll do the same with the first key pose frame at the start of the timeline. And as I'm reviewing the frames, I'm going to also move the anticipation frame position over more to the left so the action is more noticeable. And now I will play back my animation. I like to review the animation after completing a portion to see if there's any elements I want to adjust before moving on. For the second part of the animation, I will be morphing the pumpkin shape back into the text. And for this morphing sequence, I want it to be different to create some interest in the animation. So I will have the pumpkin morph directly into the text instead of using a motion trail. To help me make sure my animation loops seamlessly, I'm going to copy the first frame and paste it at the end of the animation. Okay, so now with the text in place, I'm going to go back into the flipbook mode. And just like with the first part of the animation, I will begin drawing my first new frame in between the second and first key poses. For this first in between frame, I'm going to redraw the pumpkin a little wider as it will need to expand a little before it can form the text. And then I'll go in and draw the outlines for the eyes and mouth and fill in the outlines. 
Next, I'll add a new frame and I'll draw a rough outline around the text while still maintaining a similar shape to the pumpkin. And as I draw the internal outlines, I will draw them around some of those text shapes and then fill in the outlines. In the next new frame, I'm going to redraw the blob, but follow the outline of the text closer this time. And I will draw outlines around the text on the inside of the blob. And this is to show that the blob is beginning to break apart into the text shapes. Lastly, I will fill in the shape. Next, I'll add a new frame, and this time I'm redrawing the letters merged together. As I want to show in the animation that the blob is starting to form the letters. And just like with the motion trail, I'm going to create some small blobs and drops around and in between the main text blob. And as I go, I will clean up some of the areas where color drop didn't fully fill in, as well as add some more connected blobs. Once I'm satisfied, I'll tap on a new final frame and I will redraw the text. And I'm not going to try to draw the text perfect or fully complete as it's still morphing into its final form. And as I go, I will also redraw some of the blobs a little smaller. And that's looking good. Now I'll exit flipbook mode and I'll go ahead and delete the duplicated first key pose since I won't need that anymore. And now I'll play back my animation to review how everything looks. And after reviewing, I noticed that there's several frames that I need to clean up where the color drop didn't fully fill in the shape. I typically don't worry about fine tuning my animation anyway until I have it in a final spot. So now's a perfect time to go in, enter the flipbook mode, and then just go through every frame and touch each of them up. And now that I have that done, I'm gonna go and I'll play it all back to review how everything is looking. And that's definitely looking a lot better now. Last thing I'm going to do is add an orange background. So I'll tap on the plus icon and then tap on track to create a new empty track. Next, I'll move the playhead to the start of the timeline and I'll go into my color palette and select orange. And then I will color drop it into the frame. Next, I will extend this frame so it aligns with the end of my animation. And now I'll just drag that track down to the bottom. And that's it. We now have this fun morphing animation that makes a great Halloween animation. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial and if there are any other tutorials you'd like to see in the comments. Bye for now.